Hi everybody, what is going on? Welcome back, whoops, welcome back to another video. Today's video we're going to be looking at Kurt Warner, number 90 in the top 100 greatest players of all time, the NFL. The quicker you're here, the faster you go, that's why where I come from the only thing we know is oh. He was the backup quarterback uh, for the St. Louis Rams during the 98 regular season. I don't know how many games he played, not many at all. The 99 season comes along. The starting quarterback, Trent Green, was injured in, the pre in a preseason game. Kurt Warner is thrust into the spotlight. He's, he's uh, the new starter for the team, and he goes through and throws one of the top seasons by a quarterback in NFL history by throwing for 4,353 4, yards with 41 touchdown passes. Now, he had the support of running back Marshall Falk, and wide receivers Isaac Bruce, Tony Holt, Azazir Hakim, and Ricky Prull. So apparently all of those guys together created such a high-powered offense that it was nicknamed the greatest show on turf. And that's a term I've heard before. Uh, what did he do? He threw three touchdown passes in each of his three, first three games in the 99 season. And he's the only NFL quarterback in history to accomplish that feat and only the second other than Dan Marino to do it in his first two NFL starts. Now there was a guy this year, Patrick Mahomes. I don't know, I don't know how well he's done, but he, he was probably pretty close to that. He, um, he went through the season, won MVP, and then got to the Super Bowl and won MVP in the Super Bowl as well. And as far as I'm aware, Warner was awarded the 1995, uh, 1999 Super Bowl MVP, becoming one of only six players to win both the league MVP and Super Bowl MVP awards in the same year. The others are Bart Starr in 66, Terry Bradshaw in 78, Joe Montana in 89, Emmett Smith in 93, and Steve Young in 94. Now, I don't, I haven't read what happens later in his career, but I mean that <laughs> as your first season as a starter in the MVP in the uh, the NFL. Winning the MVP, I mean, I just hope, I hope and pray that the rest of his career was, you know, somewhat good. I mean, you just, you just can't match that, can you? I don't know. Some people, when that happens to them, it's, it's that, it's that one hit wonder sort of mentality. They, they just can't make it back up. The, the crowd, the, the, uh, the fans don't allow them to, to play, you know, their average game anymore because they've come and, and been so good from the start they just don't they don't accept it so I've seen that happen to many rugby stars and I've heard about it happening to many NFL stars but with that said it's about time we get into this video so let's Line, do it and I see some high school kid back in my groceries I know I got broken eggs I just know it but if it makes great quarterbacks I'll pay the price so so Kurt Warner was a, a, a grocery packer? <laughs> That's even better. It's so rewarding when a guy gets to the mountain who went all the way up from the bottom of the mountain. Thanks for the chance, he said. I write movies and if I pitch that story, I get laughed out of the room. Thanks I for the chance, coach. If the Kurt Warner story was a Hollywood movie, it would fall into the action-adventure category. What a pass by Kurt Warner, the first quarterback in NFL history with three touchdowns. I was trying to think what, um, what uniform that was, but it's the Rams. He starts. In this genre, the main character comes from humble beginnings. Before joining the St. Louis Rams, Warner played minor league football and worked at a supermarket to make ends meet. You had to score every what time a you story. the ball. You threw every down. It helped me become more accurate to get the ball out quickly. Arena football helped me tremendously to handle everything that would be thrown at me in the years to come. We've got Trent Green down. We've got Trent Green down in the middle of the field. These scripts so that must have been the preseason game. The when an ordinary man is called on to do extraordinary things. Kurt Warner checks in. Vermeil, who cries easily, let's admit it, but this time had a pretty good reason. 
Uh, and just Who cries easily? Season. We will rally around Kurt Warner and we'll play. <laughs> <laughs> the coach cries easily, okay. In 1999, Emotional guy. First year as a starter, hey. Warner threw 41 touchdown passes right. and led the Rams to the Super Bowl. Super Bowl can bury great, great players with great confidence, but he's one of those guys with the ability to, like, I guess I'll digest this in the offseason, you know? And I've got enough to do right now. Easy thing to say, but hard to do. Yeah. Kurt Warner followed up his regular season MVP with a Super Bowl MVP, and his 414 yards passing remains a Super Bowl record. Wow, 414 yards in a Super Bowl. The gateway to the West is now the gateway to the best football team in the world. How would you feel? You wouldn't even be able to take it in, like. <laughs> in the second act, the hero suffers a reversal oh. of fortune. Giants. In the middle of his story, Kurt Warner looked like a flop. But he authored a Hollywood ending by leading the Arizona Cardinals to the Super Bowl in 2008. Nine years later, he went back to the Super Bowl with a different, his third team, it looks like. Did they win? No, conference champion. We got state now. Let's go get the one next week. And as Todd said, let's shock the world. He's going grey. It's going to be a salt and pepper action. Mentally rewarding. America's supposed to be about stories like that. And so when they happen, everybody just feels kind of redeemed and your hope gets redeemed. Here's a guy who could have easily been somebody we never knew about. And for all we know, there is another Kurt Warner who is still bagging groceries. You know, maybe he's in produce now. Interest in pro football spread to California. And I would say there is. So, let me just check that. I didn't... I was, I was actually... I was actually looking at... Uh, there he is. So he's 47 now. He played for the Packers in 94. And then went to minor league, I believe. And then he came back to the Rams, then the Giants in 2004, and the Arizona Cardinals from 05 to 09. And let me see if he won that Super Bowl. Warner became one of the very few quarterbacks in NFL history to throw more touchdowns than incompletions in a playoff game. <laughs> Fuck. That's insane. He finished the game with the second highest quarterback rating in NFL playoff history with a rating of 154.1. On January 16th, Warner was injured in the first half trying to tackle a ball carrier after an interception on the way to a 45-14 loss at New Orleans in the NFC Divisional Round. He returned in the second half, but went off to understudy Matt Lienart midway through the fourth quarter. Warner became an Iowa Barnstormers broadcaster for the 2011 Arena Football League season. In May 2010, he was inducted into the Arena Football Hall of Fame. On February 4th, he was elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in the class of 2017. On August 5th, 2017, Kurt Warner was officially inducted into the NFL Pro Football Hall of Fame. He is the only person inducted into both the Pro Football Hall of Fame and Arena Football Hall of Fame. Huh. So it doesn't it it doesn't show me it doesn't doesn't show me that he if he won Warner's third career Super Bowl appearance. The Cardinals lost to the Pittsburgh Steelers, leaving him with a career one and two record in Super Bowls. Despite losing, Warner still managed to throw for three hundred and seventy-seven yards, the fourth highest total in Super Bowl history. Wow, he completed 72.1% of his passes and had a quarterback rating of 112.3. He had now recorded the three highest single game passing yardage totals in the history of the Super Bowl. He had taken his team to the Super Bowl every year that he played as a starting quarterback during all regular 
and postseason games. What was his other Super Bowl appearance? What was his other Super Bowl appearance? Let me see that, just before we go. Warner quickly returned to MVP form in 2001. Although his performance lagged behind his 99 performance, which is understandable, he amassed a league-high 36 touchdown passes and 4,830 passing yards. Holy shit. His tendency for turnovers carried over from 2000 as he tossed a career-high 22 interceptions, but still led the greatest show on turf to its third consecutive 6-0 start. Huh. Super Bowl, in Super Bowl 36, Warner threw for 365 yards and, pass, and a passing touchdown along with a rushing touchdown. But the game ended in a 2017 loss when Patriots kicker Adam Vinatieri kicked a game-winning field goal as time expired, giving the Patriots the first of three Super Bowl wins in four years. Rumours have abounded that the Patriots cheated in the Super Bowl win, specifically by taping the Rams' walkthroughs. At practice, I assume. Okay, right. So he's been to three Super Bowls, only won one, but that first year was fucking unbelievable. That might be, that might be Patrick Mahomes. He might do the same thing. What do you think? If the Chiefs go and win the Super Bowl, that's going to be a similar story. Although, I doubt whether Patrick Mahomes was uh, packing shopping bags. And it sounds as if Kurt Warner actually played for the Green Bay Packers like way back in 2000. And Following his college career, Warner went undrafted in the 1994 NFL Draft. He was invited to try out for the Green Bay Packers training camp in 94, but was released before the regular season began. He was competing for a spot against Brett Favre, Mark Brunel, and former Heisman Trophy winner Ty Detmer. Detmer. While Warner was with the Packers, the head coach was Mike Holmgren. The quarterback coach was Steve Marucci, and Andy Reid was the offensive assistant. After he was released, Marucci told him that he knew Warner had enormous potential, but was not ready to be an NFL quarterback yet. After his release, Warner stocked shelves at a high V grocery store in Cedar Falls for $5.50 an hour. Warner often cites this starting point when telling of his rise to NFL stardom in 99. He also mentions that his deepened dedication to Christianity occurred around 1997. He returned to Northern Iowa and worked as a graduate assistant coach with the football team while still hoping to get another tryout with an NFL team. Right, so that was my first look at Kurt Warner. Most likely my last, but now I do know his history, and I'm glad I looked up all that stuff after watching that video. So if you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you want to subscribe, please do, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.